Welcome to this module about fast slam. Fast slam is uh, one popular way of solving the simultaneous localization and mapping slam problem. It utilizes a marginalized particle filter in the solution, and that is how we will attack it. To fully appreciate this description, you should be familiar with the marginalized particle filter and the slam problem. To set the stage, I'll uh, repeat the simultaneous localization and mapping problem. It's the problem of finding the pose of a sensor platform moving around in an unknown environment. Uh, we want to find the pose uh, with respect to a map of this environment that we are creating while we're moving around in it. It turns out that it's uh, very important to do the two things simultaneously to solve the problem. It's modeled in the following general way, where we have a pose of the sensor platform that evolves uh, according to a normal dynamic model, as we've seen so many times before, and uh, a map that is static in time. So there's no process noise uh, changing this over time. We uh, make observations of landmarks that we are stacking in the map, uh, and the measurement equation relates these landmarks to the pose of the sensor. We don't know in a general setting uh, from what landmark a specific measurement comes, so we need to do an uh, association. And the association here is denoted by this the uh, ki, which says that at time k, the ith measurement relates to this specific landmark. In this um, video, we'll solve this problem specified by this model using fast slam, which is a marginalized particle filter. Just as in the case of the marginalized particle filter, the key component to uh, solve the problem is to factorize the posterior distribution in a proper way. So if we look at the posterior distribution here, so it's the full trajectory of the sensor platform and the map, given the measurements. We factorize it into parts. One is the determination of the map, given the trajectory and the measurements. And the second part that is finding the trajectory given the measurements. The first part here is uh, treated using a, a Kalman filter, extended Kalman filter, depending on the nonlinearities in the measurement equation. Whereas the second part can be treated as a uh, particle filter. And this is exactly what we do with the marginalized particle filter. One important property that we receive by making this factorization here is that the first term that relates to the map, it's uh, conditioned on the trajectory of the sensor platform. That means that we can treat all the landmarks individually. It gives us a complexity benefit compared to the extended comma filter where we need to treat them all at the same time and the cross correlations with, between them are important. Uh, how can we uh, just lose the cross correlations? Well, we don't. They are encoded in the particles instead. So we need to use particles that encode that information. Before I can go on and outline the fast slam algorithm, uh, I'll have to reformulate the measurement equation on this form. Uh, I do it because we need to highlight the conditional linear behavior in terms of the map, which is necessary for the marginalized particle filter to work out, and because this is a form that is quite generally applicable. For our normal measurement, h0 and h1 up here can be given by these expressions here, so they fit. The formulation that I've used here covers uh, further first order Taylor expansions of most uh, common measurement equations. It uh, fits well with the bearing and range measurements, where we have two rows per landmark, and it fits well with bearing only measurements coming from a camera detection, for example. So it's applicable to all the sensors that we consider. 
As a first step in outlining the FASTAM algorithm, we'll look at how to estimate the map. And as I said, the map components, the landmarks, are independent, so we can estimate them one at a time. So we'll start by looking at how to estimate landmark J, given all the measurements that we have received of landmark J from time k equals 1 to n. This is a linear problem, a linear batch problem, which we can then solve with the weighted least squares. So if we insert the weighted least squares solution uh, from previous uh, uh, videos uh, to solve uh, for the landmark J here, we get these expressions. They look more frightening than they are. Uh, it's more or less putting in the information that we have. What's been introduced here is C bar sub k j, which is the mapping from landmark j to the measurement i that was used at time k for this landmark. Uh, and we need some association for, for that, but we don't consider how to do that. Also, for the future, we will denote this thing here that we take the inverse of, capital I, which is the information for this landmark J. And we have the second part here, which is the information state for the landmark J. We should also observe that under no Gaussian noise assumptions, etc., we can give a posterior distribution for the landmark given the measurements and the trajectory. It's a Gaussian distribution that, well, this mean that we compute from the weight least squares and inverse of the information for covariance. We want to compute the map recursively, which we can do with information filter. You see the equations here. Uh, it's basically taking the weighted least square solution and just adding one term at the time to this information information state. And we can from that extract the landmark position by multiplying that information state with inverse information. We will now show how we can solve for the pose, the trajectory, using a particle filter. One important part of this uh, derivation is the fact that given the trajectory and the measurements, the map can be solved for using an ordinary weighted least squares solution, as we just seen. Uh, and we were also able to derive a uh, expression for the uncertainty of the single landmarks. That means that we can construct a measurement uh, likelihood here for a specific measurement that matched to a certain landmark that is based on the measurement equation combined with uh, the uncertainty in the map as extra measurement noise. This can be used as a normal measurement update in the particle filter to weight the uh, particle weights. The next part that's needed in a particle filter to conclude this uh, fast slam algorithm is how to time update the pose. There is two different methods to do this. The first one suggested, uh, also denoted fast slam 1.0 is to use the same method as in the SRI particle filter, so the proposal. In an update to FASTLAM 1.0, FASTLAM 2.0, it was instead suggested to use the optimal proposal, which uh, includes also the measurements here. And we can see that it's hardly the same uh, prior as in FASTLAM 1.0, but also including uh, the measurement likelihood. This uh, makes the particle count better, so we get particles in a better place, so we need fewer particles. So we are now ready to um, summarize the fast slime algorithm. We start by initializing particles according to some information about the pose of the special platform. We perform data association. Note that this is done per particle in this case, so it's not as 
essential to get it right. That's in the extended common filter SLAM solution. We update the particle weights using uh, this equation here. It's based on this uh, measurement equation listed on the previous slide. Afterwards, of course, we need to normalize the weights. Resampling can be performed if necessary. And in this case, we also resample the maps, so the maps match the particles. Next, we need to do a measurement update of the map. So we use the pose and the measurement to compute the map using the information filter. And then we make a time update in the particles based on either the SIR or TF proposal or the optimal proposal in the FASTLAM2. That is the FASTLAM algorithm. Um, here are some of the properties that I would like to highlight. Uh, it's actually a really ideal method for ground moving vehicles with a small state space and vision sensors that provides a large amount of landmarks because it treats the map in a good way for that. And the reason for this is that it scales well with the landmarks. It scales linearly, uh, at least in theory. You might need more particles to, to cover the correlations, but in, in theory it's linear in the landmarks. But uh, as the standard particle filter, it handles large state dimensions so-so. Uh, so if we would have a large state dimension of uh, six or more maybe, that would be difficult to solve with the particle filter. But for small state spaces, as uh, suggested here with the ground moving vehicle with three states, it's ideal. Uh, it's also more robust uh, towards association errors, which is nice. Um, since uh, we make the associations per particle instead of globally, as in extended comma filter slam, for example, we get the diversity in different associations, and overall we would probably get a, a good solution. Lobe closure is poorly handled in the particle filter slam here. Uh, that's because we get particle depletion in the past, and hence when we re-see a landmark that we haven't seen for quite a while, there's a little diversity in the particles to actually make any changes. In that case, the extended comma filter slam is much better. I'll finish with an illustration of fast slam before we conclude this video. It's an example of a project that was uh, jointly run by Atmatic Control and Ida. It's an airborne UAV looking down using a camera, where we in this case use fast slam for positioning. We will see landmarks with the red dots and blue particles uh, representing the map. We're going to fly over this and you'll see how it progress over time. And you can see how the clouds of particles around the red landmarks grows as we see them more and how we fairly well follows the appropriate position on the ground with the landmarks indicating that the map and the positioning is working well. We have no lobe closure in this case, so we don't see the problem of that. So to summarize what we've done in this uh, module, we have looked at the simultaneous localization and mapping SLAM problem, and it has been solved using a marginalized particle filter. Uh, this resulted in two methods called the FASTLAM 1.0 and the FASTLAM 2.0 that are quite popular in literature, especially for ground moving robotic vehicles with uh, lots of landmark measurements but a uh, small state space. Important properties to highlight is that the methods scale well with the number of landmarks but poorly with the state dimension. Uh, that also explains why it's popular in, in the robotics community. Uh, landmark associations are not extremely critical. Unfortunately, FASTLAM handles load closures poorly, 
but there are methods to get around that if necessary. To read more about fast slam methods, look in the textbook in section 11.3.